May 31st, 2013. A truck traveling over 60 miles per hour rear ends an SUV at a traffic light. First responders arrived to find the SUV engulfed in flames. I really right then believed that it was going to be a fatality. The victim was 23-year-old children's pastor and performer, Cody Burns. You could see a hand hanging out of the vehicle. And, and to be honest, we had automatically assumed it's probably going to be a body recovery. But as firefighters struggled to douse the flames. I seen his hand move, and I immediately turned and ran back to the truck and told the crews that, hey, he's still alive. It turned into a rescue instead of a recovery. So, you know, we've got to pick this up. Now they were battling the flames and the clock. It took an hour to pull Cody from the wreckage and load him on a waiting chopper. I cried. I don't think there was a dry eye of any of the firefighters on that scene. This was probably the bravest rescue I've ever witnessed in my career. Sheriff Hill went to Cody's home to inform his parents about the accident. He said, Cody's been in a bad accident, and he's been life lighted. And so my heart just sunk at that moment. Jan and her husband rushed to the hospital where Cody's two brothers and grandmother met them. They learned Cody had severe burns and needed to be transferred to the Richard M. Fairbanks Burn Center in Indianapolis, about two and a half hours away. They wouldn't let us see Cody right away. They put us in a little um, side room. So immediately, you're thinking the worst. Once Cody was stabilized, the family was taken to see him. It was devastating to see him the first time. We prayed over him, and then they put him on the life flight, and they flew him to Indianapolis at that point. The burn center director, Dr. Rajiv Sood, assessed Cody's condition. Cody had fourth degree burns that in some places had gone to the bone. He had very significant burns, over 40% of his total body surface area. There was a uh, inhalation injury component. When patients who have burns sustain a lung injury, they have three times the chance of not making it. Jan and her family arrived at the hospital to find Cody deeply sedated. We were just kind of numb, and it was just hard to take in. I just felt like I was having a nightmare, and I didn't know how to pray. I didn't even know what to say. But their church and Facebook friends around the world were praying for Cody's strength and healing. Soon, the doctors were confident Cody would survive, but the road ahead would be painful and uncertain. In the coming weeks, Cody would endure numerous surgeries to remove dead tissue and graft on new. The surgeries involved in burn care, are, are, they, are, they are pretty awful. Um, you know, it really conceptually involves removing layers of skin first, uh, and then fat as needed, and muscle, or whatever, whatever is burnt, really. There were repeated episodes of infection. There was also the chance Cody wouldn't regain full use of his limbs. While grateful her son would live, Jan now feared for his future in ministry. He always, at an early age, had a drive and a vision to serve God, and, I, and that continued to grow as he got older. But that wasn't all he could lose. They told me they were gonna have to probably amputate three of his fingers, and I'm like, you can't, he juggles. You can't do that. Feeling like I was in a dream, I also felt a peace, knowing, and I, I know that was from others praying. Through those prayers and the skill of his doctors, Cody lost none of his fingers and began improving every day. After almost four weeks, he was breathing on his own with no permanent damage to his lungs. But as he came out of sedation, Cody struggled to face his new reality. When they would unwrap my hands, I was devastated because I could actually see my bones, parts where the flesh had been burnt off. It took a long time before I really fully understood the extent of my injuries. My heart was broke because I knew that I would probably never be able to do the things that I once loved to do. Over the next several months, Cody endured more surgeries and physical therapy. He also wrestled with depression, but says his faith saw him through. God didn't do this to me, but he allowed it to happen because he could trust me. He knew that with him being my strength, he could trust and know that Cody Burns is gonna be able to take this tragic event turn it around and make it into something beautiful. But it's only with his strength and with him guiding me and helping me. Cody is back brightening the lives of others as a performer and motivational speaker.
He had a vision of, hey, I'm going to get back to ministry and I'm going to get back to, you know, juggling and, and spreading the word with just a different uh, sort of message, which was actually more powerfully delivered at, in his case uh, after entry. He was like off the charts on his juggling before. To see him do it now is even so much more meaningful because I know what he went through. And to see him raise his hands now and give God glory is just, it just overwhelming. I'm just so thankful. Jesus lets us know that, you know, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, he's overcome the world. And so I cling to him. He is my rock, he is my strength, he is my hope. He's the reason I exist and I continue to move forward. Wow, what a miracle for him physically. What a miracle for him emotionally and spiritually as well. I mean, God meets us right at the place that we're at with, with Cody. I think of the scripture where God says he'll walk through the fire with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, that certainly happened for him and such a painful recovery from, from But at the, the other end, yeah. you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. If you have 40% of your body burned, if you have mm. inhaled flames and they've damaged your lungs, you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But here's the great thing. At the end of that journey, what you find is a new life and a new appreciation. And you heard it from him clearly, where he's quoting the words of Jesus. In this world, you will have trouble. It's a promise from our Savior. In this world, you will have trouble. Guess what? Right now, that promise is being fulfilled. <laughs> but then he adds to it, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. When, when you focus on the problem, when you focus on all the difficulties you're having, you're not focusing on the answer. Be of good cheer. Focus on the answer. What Jesus has already done, mm -hmm. what he is doing, and what he's about to do. For he ever gives us the victory. We have the victory in him. We have to walk through it. We're walking through that valley. But at the other side, there's another mountain and another mountaintop experience. That's why the Apostle Paul said it's from faith to faith, glory to glory. That means we don't continually lead, live in that glory. We don't continually lead, live a life of extraordinary faith. It's from faith to faith that we have to struggle for it. We have to fight for it. We have to fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. When we do that, wow, miracles will happen. Look to Jesus. He's the author, the finisher of your faith. Look to him. He's the answer. Don't look at your problem. Look to him, give him thanks for the solution he's about to give to you. If he can restore the fingers of someone who had them burned down to the bone and can restore them that they're limber enough to be a juggler again, just imagine what he can do for you. Yeah. Now, we've got some prayer requests that comes in. Here's one from Instagram. My husband was just diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Please pray for his healing. Rebecca from Facebook, please pray for me. I'm a widow. I'm suffering from depression. Let's pray for these and let's pray for you and realize Jesus has overcome the world. He's already overcome your problem. All we have to do is look to him. Lord, we look to you. We look to you for you are the author. You are the finisher of our faith. You are our hope. You give us hope. You give us faith. And whatever you begin, you are faithful to complete. So, Lord God, we turn from the problem. We turn to you. We lift our problem to you. Mm. And we ask, Savior, save us from this. Healer, heal us from this. Deliverer, deliver us from this. Be our very present help in our time of trouble, and in our time of need. Hear our prayer, Lord God. Come be Emmanuel, be God with us as we walk through this journey. We walk with you. Hold our hand now. Give us your peace and your assurance that you're working all things together for our good. Be with us. 
Terry, God's mm -hmm. given you something. There's someone you've been, uh, you've fallen, you've tripped, you've stumbled um, over a, some kind of uneven ground, but the damage from that's been unbelievable. And you're so discouraged. God is healing every single thing you're facing right now in Jesus' name. Be restored and made whole. Amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're always here for you. Our delight to pray for you. 1-800-700-7000.